Hi everyone, this is Sharan here. Welcome to my channel. Today is the 50th day of learning data science in 100 days series. So far, we have covered about the various core concepts that is required in order to become a data scientist. And going forward, we'll be going into the algorithms, the different types of algorithms and uh, the concepts behind the algorithms. Also, we will be going into the project implementation. So today, there are four things that we are going to discuss in today's topic. The first one is the basics that is required in order to perform a good exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis is really important because 80% of the time in any data science project would be spent on exploring the data. So it is really required to be drawn on the basic concepts. The second one is the tools that can help us in improving the exploratory data analysis. The tools that can help us in making some things faster or, or things that can be used as an accelerator. The third one is about feature engineering. What is feature engineering? How it helps in improving the accuracy of the model? How the feature engineering can be broadly classified into? And finally, about the new feature generation. What are all the various techniques that can be used in order to create new features and how it can help in improving the accuracy of the model. So these are all the four things that we will be covering today. So before going into them in detail, if you like what I'm doing here, if you are learning something new out of these videos, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to my channel. Also enable the notification icon so that all my videos reach you. Also, if you are interested, please consider subscribing to my newsletter. I'll be sharing some of my data science knowledge, snippets, the interesting articles that I find as a newsletter to you guys. Okay, coming to the first point, which is the basics that is required in order to perform a good exploratory data analysis. As I have explained, about 75 to 80% of time in any data science project, like whether it is building a predictive model or doing the analysis or identifying various insights, 70 to 80 percentage of the time would be spent on understanding the data much better. So it is really important for us to be good on this core concepts, core skill sets. Some of the core skill sets that would be really required would be basic programming because in order to analyze the data, you would be using a programming language, mostly R or Python. So whatever be the language, you need to be comfortable in using those language, comfortable in implementing some of the basics like the loops, conditions and so on. You need to have a good understanding about the data structure. What are all the different data types that are available in the language that you are using? When to use what type of data? What is the difference between them? And how using one, ty one type of data could help in improving or making the analysis faster? Second one is the libraries that can help in the data analysis. So if I take Python as an example, so then one of the top libraries for data analysis is Pandas. So it is required for you to know some of the functionalities of pandas such as group by and aggregation because most of the data analysis that we would do we will try to group by and use aggregation to see if there are any patterns the other pandas functionality that could help would be summary analysis pivot and cross tabulation so these help us in understanding whether there is any relationship between two or more attributes two or more features that are present in the data set it is really important for us to understand about how different attributes behave when considered to, together. And apart from pandas, it is important to understand about NumPy. When you have a lot of numerical data, numerical Python, which can also be called as NumPy, will be very helpful in order to make some of the analysis faster. So some basic understanding about NumPy will be really helpful. After pandas and NumPy, the third one is statistics. I wouldn't ask you to wait until you become an expert in statistics, but there are a few things in statistics that should be understood. It can be classified into three different categories. One is the descriptive stats, second is relationship-based stats, and third is inferential stats. Descriptive stats will be very useful in order to understand, in order to perform an univariate analysis to understand better about the data set that we have. Relationship-based stats such as correlation and causal analysis would help you to understand whether there is any relationship between two or more attributes, two or more features that is present in our data set. Whereas inferential stats would help us in understanding about is, is, there, is there any inference that we can make out from the data. This will be very useful when we work on use cases. For example, when a product company wants to launch a new feature, so they can launch to a smaller audience and then see if it is really effective so that it can be launched onto the larger audience. So in order, to, in order to get some inference, we use inferential statistics. There are various hypothesis testing that can be performed for these purposes. And the final basic, basic concepts that would really help is visualization. So there are various tools and techniques that can help in visualization. One, one such package is Seaborn. Seaborn is a very 
useful package with just one line of code you would be able to do various analysis spread out various patterns insights out, out of the data so these would be the basic concepts that you should be really good in order to perform the exploratory data analysis the quality of the analysis you are doing is really important because it will directly affect the model that you are building or the analysis that you are making so the more or the better the exploratory data analysis that you are doing the better the outcome of the project would be so in order to give your best it is really important for you to have a strong or have a good knowledge about the basic programming whatever be the language that you use if it if you choose python then you need to be really good in packages such as pandas and numpy and apart from that you need to have a basic knowledge about statistics what are all the different statistics techniques how it can help in doing various analysis and finally visualization the various visualization tools how to extract insights using visualization and how how to present those insights to the business stakeholders now moving on to the second point tools that can help in exploratory data analysis some of the tools in python are sweetwis and detail so these two tools can help in performing the exploratory data analysis the first one is kind of rigid the the extent of analysis that can be performed is uh, same it doesn't allow much flexibility but it is really good for you to just e with one line of code with this particular tool you would be able to get a complete picture about various attributes how how they behave what outliers are present and so on and second one is detail where it allows you to make some modifications to the data so if you want to build new features make some modifications to the existing feature and do the analysis parallelly so this can also be very helpful these two tools i have found them to be really fast and very intuitive it's very easy for you to learn so having these two can help in improving the analysis so these two tools can't replace the traditional exploratory data analysis that is usually performed but these two should be taken as a complementary method that can support the analysis that we are already doing apart from that we can also make use of uh, some tools kind of like dashboarding tools to to extract insights present those insights with the various business stakeholders and so on the third point is feature engineering so feature engineering can be broadly classified as two so one is feature engineering based on the algorithm that we are using and feature engineering based on the data set that we have feature engineering based on algorithm would be for example if we use algorithm such as linear regression algorithm there are some basic assumptions that are being made uh, the dependent variable and independent variable should have a linear relationship all the attributes should be normally distributed so in case you are using linear regression algorithm if you find there are a lot of outliers in your data set then it is really important for you to treat all those outliers so if you have a lot of outliers then you should consider doing some kind of data transformation such as log transformation there are there are various other transformations if you are interested in in knowing about all the transformation it has been already covered in one of the previous session i will provide a link to all those sessions in the description so that you can see it and then you can learn it if you have missed it and another example for algorithm based feature engineering is if you are using distance based algorithm such as k means or k n algorithm so then what happens is all the attributes should be of same scale if you have one attribute which is on an larger scale and one attribute on smaller scale what happens is the larger scale attribute can be dominant over the other attributes to give you an example let's say we we work on a particular problem and we have two attributes one is age one is salary so we have age which is usually like less than 100 and we have salary let's say it is in hundreds of thousands so the scale is really there is a huge difference between these two so when we use these kind of attributes in a distance based algorithm such as k means or knn what happens is the attribute which is on a larger scale for example salary which is huge the range is very huge as compared to age what happens is these attributes which is on larger range become becomes more dominant over the other attributes so in order to avoid the dominance what we do is we try to rescale them into an comparable ranges so in order to rescale we use normalization or standardization so these are all the various techniques so what i'm trying to say is this is one of the feature engineering requirement that that comes because of the algorithm that we are choosing and apart from the algorithm that we are choosing in some cases what happens is the feature engineering can also be driven from the data set that we have 
And classic example is, let's say we have a numerical attribute with a larger range or we have a categorical attribute where there are lots of categories. So when we try to retain all of these information while building the model, what, what would happen is there are high chances for our model to become an overfit. When I say overfit, what happens is the model would work extremely well on the training data set, but when we put them to use on the test data set, it fails miserably. So in order to avoid these kind of situations, we try to regularize it. So how we can regularize it? We can regularize it by creating uh, integer encoding, by using integer encoding or various methods that are available for it. In other cases, let's say we have we have a categorical attributes which is non-ordinal. When I say non-ordinal, it means that it is not ordered. Um, and a classic example would be, let's say different cities. So the data set have people come in from 10 different cities and we consider it as an categorical attribute. So there is no relationship between the different cities. One city doesn't mean higher or lower as compared to other. So when we use integer encoding, we will give a number to each of these city, let's say one to 10. So when we use integer encoding and pass on these values to an algorithm, the algorithm tries to extract some patterns. It will try to see if a low number means something as compared to a high number, which is not the case. So in case of non-ordinal categorical attribute, we try to use one not encoding and we try to convert that into a binary vector. So it can use it can be very useful in improving the accuracy of the model. So, so this is another classic example where the requirement for feature engineering is driven because of the data set that we have. So the feature engineering requirement can be driven based on the algorithm that we use or based on the data set that we have. And these are all some of the classic examples. If you are interested in knowing about each one of them, uh, they have been in covered in detail previously. I will provide you a link to all those uh, sessions in the description. And finally, new feature generation. New feature is really important for us to ensure that our model accuracy is quite high. Competitions such as title, in some cases, they they appreciate using uh, use of external data sets. In some cases, they ask you not to use any external data set. But whatever it may be, in real life scenarios, the more the data that you have, the more better the quality of the data that you have, the better the results would be. So. Uh, it's always important for you to explore scenarios where you can bring in new feature that can be used in the analysis or in the model building. So some methods that can be used for including the new features are, you can try to see how the different features that is already available can be combined together in order to create a new feature. And then you can see if the new feature can work better as compared to those features individually. For example, if I take Titanic dataset, we have age, fair, and so many other attributes. What we can do is we can try to uh, combine age and fair. We can maybe multiply both of them, create a new attribute based on that, and then see if this attribute works better instead of having those two attributes separately. So that is one way. So where we make use of the existing attributes in order to create a new attribute. The second is bringing a new feature altogether. For example, let's say you're working on a scenario to predict the energy usage of a particular customer. And you have all the data about their historic usage, what type of uh, products they have in their household and so on. So in order to improve the accuracy of the model, you can try to bring in some kind of third party data like the weather data because the energy consumption for a particular user would be driven by the weather conditions as well. If the weather is quite hot, like we will be going for air condition. So the power consumption would naturally increase. So depending upon the scenario that you are working on, try to figure out what could be the third party, what could be the external factors that can actually influence the particular behavior that we are working on. So by understanding or by thinking from that point of view, we will be coming up with a lot of third party data that can actually be very helpful in improving the accuracy of the model or the improving the analysis that we are trying to do. So that's it about the exploratory data analysis and feature engineering. I hope you would have learned something new. If you have learned something new, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And as I said previously, if you are interested to learn or read more about data science, please consider subscribing to my newsletter. I will provide you a link to the newsletter in the description. That is it for today. See you in the next session. See ya. Bye.